To understand what I'm about to tell you, you need to do something first. You need to believe in the logical. Can you- Wow, is that the Flash from Fortnite? Number one victory royale, yeah, Fortnite, we about to get down. Get down. Ten kills on the board right now, just wipe them. My eyes! Hello there, this is part two of my series about CW's The Flash. I recommend you watch part one first if you haven't, as that video goes through scenes and context that will likely be referenced in this one. Regardless of what boat you're in, I'll recap what this series is about. The Flash is littered with internal inconsistencies and contrivances, especially when it comes to his super speed and how he uses it. I'm here to point them out, because while I had zero expectations when I watched it for the first time, except that I wanted to enjoy it, these constant issues are so glaringly obvious to the point where the show actually pisses me off. Also, people seem to agree that seasons 1 to about 3 are actual good seasons of superhero television, especially 1. <laughs> and I've proven it was terrible from the beginning. But, before I get into Season 2, I'd like to list everything we know The Flash can easily do with such an extraordinary power that is super speed. He can move and react faster than bullets from a gunshot and lightning. He can take items from people, from weapons to all of their clothing, without them being able to react to it. He can instantly relocate up to two grown adults from one place to another. He can knock people out with his speed in one hit without them being able to react. He can quickly inject a hundred people in a crowd without them being able to react. I know this one would only be useful in a specific situation, but it's worth pointing out. Got it? Good. I will be using the same criteria I used to measure Season 1. Enemies that should have been caught by now, and people who should have been saved. It's really, really gonna add up. And as always, I'd appreciate it if you watched the whole video before forming an opinion on my criticisms. There's nowhere to run! Ah, good to see the Flash being consistently stupid. Like, what is even the point of running up the building? To gain speed? He's the fastest man alive. Come on back round! Yeah, to die! <laughs> Acting. Oh, fuck off, show! Did you forget you made five encounters with this weirdo in the first season where Barry couldn't even lay a finger on him for some reason, and now you decide it's possible for him to take his gun and take it apart? Do you guys realize you just made these scenes even more of a waste of time somehow? Ah, goody. It's exhilarating to see more regular speed people manage to lay a finger on the Flash somehow. Well, at least they introduced a non-speedster villain that actually seems like a believable foe for the Flash. He's bulletproof, super strong, and can grow in size. I can see him having a hard time knocking him out or taking him to Star Labs if he tried, but it'd only be hard taking him when he's big, so the ideal time to take him to Star Labs would be... Now, 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 You gotta be fucking kidding. Where the fuck did that come from? It was not in your leg in the previous shot, nor are there any canister pieces anywhere in the shot before that one. What fucking luck? It just so happens that the one piece of the canister that survived the explosion was flung into your leg. It's almost like a little contrived stake to make the flash useless for now and allow this hunka hunka to escape. Oh baby, here we go. The mistake I made in the first video. Not turning this into a drinking game. Take a shot every time the Flash shows up and stops to talk or do nothing. Oh yes, running up to the villain and then punching them at normal speed. I'm getting deja vu, I'm getting hard. I turn. 
Oh yeah. The bad guy reaches for his neck and he wasn't able to react to it for no reason. Yeah, make my day. Ah, now we're talking. I think this is it. Sandman is the second villain that's actually worthy against The Flash. So by this point, I think we all understand that for an action scene to be considered non-contrived, the villain's abilities must meet the following criteria. They explicitly prevent Barry from immediately relocating them to Star Labs, and or they explicitly prevent Barry from knocking them out. That's pretty much it. If the villain's abilities cannot do this, and yet they beat Barry or they escape, then the scene is very contrived and therefore badly written. Your forensic reports, they're always so detailed. You know, they really paint a picture like you were somehow actually there when somebody was being brutally murdered. Yes, this is a nitpick and unrelated to the plot, but can someone please explain why this Flash chose a metal bull for a hat, and how the fuck does it stay on his head when he runs or tilts his head a little too much? It doesn't have a chin strap or any way to attach itself to his head, so is it as stupid as I think it is? Are up there. Uh, two. They both have guns. Okay. Okay. Now they're taking a little nap so the CCPD wakes them. Perfect. Now that the Flash has re-established that it is so easy to do this, the rest of the season must remain consistent or else I'm gonna blow a fuse. I can somewhat believe that Snart was able to shoot Barry given the context of the scene. Barry came to this place expecting to save Snart and not fight him. When he arrives, Snart isn't hostile towards him. He's also distracted by a noise off somewhere else. But what I cannot believe is after Sisko makes the suit heat up and melts all the ice, Barry just says, but Snart's gone. It has been almost 30 seconds since Snart left, and Barry thinks it's impossible to find him. You might argue that it's because he was just frozen, and Season 1 Episode 4 claims that the ice slows him down, but when you look at that scene, he can still run really fast. He's running alongside a firearm projectile. That should be sufficient speed to catch up to two normal guys who just ran away 30 seconds ago, especially considering his suit just activated a full body heating function. The problem here is that even if there is an explanation as to why Barry doesn't even try to run after them, the show doesn't bother telling us, not even a throwaway line like, I lost my speed or anything, he gave up before he even tried. Ugh, the drama and stakes are so artificial in this scene. Snart's dad is threatening to push this button which would detonate a bomb planted in Lisa's neck. And based on what we've seen before, the Flash is fast enough to pluck it out of his hand before he can react to him. He doesn't even have his thumb on the button for a few seconds. Fucking take it from him now! Nah, it'll be fine. Nah, just stand around and risk having Cisco not being able to remove the bomb in time. This is something I've been pointing out since season 1. Most of the superpowers these people get do not provide them super strength or durability, so they should still be able to get knocked out by things that would knock out regular people. And this scene supports my point. Some dude throws a block of metal at this guy and KOs him. Why isn't Barry doing more things like this? Kill it! Shut! What the fuck is Barry doing right now? Just watching his friend get attacked? Hit him. Hit him. Oh my god. Hey guys, cutting the power didn't work. It's like the more we anger him, the stronger he gets. Shut the fuck up and hit him. Barry, make him angry and he'll blow his fuse. No, stop coming up with these dumbass plans. Run up behind him and knock him out.
that's all it took? One weak-ass punch? Fuck you, Barry could have done this himself if he actually tried. And grab them while we can. Oh, Christ. How do you not hear a giant fucking slimy shark walk up to you? How aren't there people in the background screaming at the side of this thing? Where is the police? More importantly, how the fuck did this thing know Barry was gonna be right here? Barry arrived seconds ago with super speed. It's not like he was being followed. The shark doesn't have super speed himself. Wait, how did Barry not see this thing around when he arrived? Not only is it unbelievable that this 20 foot tall shark didn't make more noise when approaching Barry, but its sheer size makes it impossible to hide out in the open. Who wants you dead? The shark had 12 seconds to chew Barry's head off. He opened his mouth ready to do so before I started the timer. Why the fuck isn't he swallowing Barry's head right now? <laughs> but if the shark's goal is to kill Barry and he's bulletproof, then why the fuck would he drop Barry to go stop a person shooting at him when it isn't affecting him? Oh right, cause Barry is the main character. How funny that like the one time he actually gets plot armor is when he should not have any plot armor. Preacher. What? How do you know? Central City Bank, you gotta go now. Alright. Don't stop to talk, 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 don't stop to talk. Yeah, Fuck you, you pathetic piece of shit. What? Uh, oh. Compose yourself, okay. <sighs> Let's see if there's an explanation to how this woman, two seconds after turning, managed to run away when there is nowhere to fucking hide or exit. When the particle accelerator became a metahuman with the ability to derive power from starlight. So she doesn't have the power to teleport. <sighs> Trust me, Dr. Light is not a killer, and you can talk to her. Okay. Okay, wait, that doesn't mean you shouldn't knock her out and bring her to Star Labs, and that's exactly what you should do. Don't stop to talk, don't stop to talk, don't stop to talk, don't stop to talk, don't stop Looking to talk. Looking for this? Fuck you, you insufferable, brain-dead moron! could have been avoided if you just stopped light instead of chit-chatting with her. Oh my god. Ah, ah, he said it! He said it! Oh my god. Thank you. Sorry, Linda. No! <sighs> ah, good grief. Every scene with this bitch is turning out to be even worse than Captain Cold scenes. Let's go through this. So Iris pulls out a gun on Dr. Light after she just murdered a man in front of her, and goes for a headshot. But the shot doesn't penetrate the helmet, it fucking knocks it off her head. So we can safely conclude that Iris shot with the intent to kill, because she doesn't know if the helmet is bulletproof or not. The single bullet launching the helmet off her head is just so stupidly contrived, and only serves for these characters to discover Dr. Light's identity, and so that when she escapes, she leaves it behind as a lead. South Plaza train station. Platform 15. After Iris shoots her, there is so much time that passes where everyone just stands around doing nothing. 
Why the fuck didn't you shoot her again, Iris? Because she looks like your co-worker? She just killed someone in front of you with superpowers. Who cares if she does? Iris is aware of the multiverse, so it's not like she might think shooting her will affect her friend. And I'm not saying Iris should try to kill her again, but if she's so good with her gun that she nailed a headshot, why doesn't she shoot her in the shoulder or in the leg to disable her? Oh, by the way, since Barry should have already stopped her in this scene or this scene, the old man should still be alive. What are you waiting for? Don't stop to talk, 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 don't stop to talk. Why won't you just let me leave? I can't let you leave. Fuck. I left, but how should I stop her? Fuck all this bullshit! What the fuck? I can't get close enough. What should I do? What the fuck do you mean? She doesn't have super speed. She cannot react to your moves. You need to confuse her by running so fast. You create multiple after images of yourself. You create a speed mirage. No, he doesn't. All he has to do is run up behind her and knock her out or just run her to Star Labs. Oh my god, you could have done this fucking ages ago. Don't your lights not invisible? Lock the doors! Well, this power certainly came out of fucking nowhere. I wonder if they threw in invisibility in this episode to explain why she just disappeared in the last episode. Which actually doesn't explain jack shit. Because she has to take off all her clothes for it to work, and nobody can do that in two seconds. And even if she did take off her clothes, there's no pile of clothes left behind in that scene. So what do we call this, ladies and gentlemen? Terrible fucking writing. Shut the fuck up, you goddamn idiot. It's a movie about space wizards. What? But he was right there. Is he a speedster too? Does he have teleportation powers? There is no way a non-speedster could open the door, go through it, have the door close completely, and be somewhere we can't see them in one second. Also, go look for him! Run around the building, dumbass! Based on what Barry knows, this guy isn't a teleporter or speedster, so go outside and look for him. He literally can't be further than five feet away from the entrance. You brought arrows to a gunfight. What guns? Oh, killed him. Why the fuck did you guys jump down? You're safe on top of this truck. Just shoot them from up there. Look. Knock him out, 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 knock him out. You stupid. Bitch. Why are you getting his bow? Knock him out! Jesus Christ, how is it taking this long to grab them? If you're faster than bullets and lightning, then you are so much faster than an object being thrown by a non-speedster. Yeah, I can do that too. Knock him out, knock him out, knock him out, knock him out. No Why are you just looking around? Oh my- oh my god. Where did he go? Oh, for fuck's sake, every goddamn villain in this show inexplicably has teleportation powers. Put your hands in the air. Yes, I'm Harrison Wells. I'm not the Harrison Wells. Stop! What? Why didn't Snow come back? She took seven steps. Are you telling me she's too far away to hear this? You just heard an unfamiliar voice make a threat. Shouldn't you go see what's going on? Give me that. <gasps> he can fake. 
phase through Dr. Wells' chest and remove the bullet. Here's a genuine question I have about the solution. How is he able to pinch the bullet without phasing through it too? Let's say the answer to this is he's able to slow down the speed of only his fingertips, enough to grab the bullet. But then, wouldn't his fingertips also get stuck in his chest? Don't say this is a nitpick because this is what fucking saves a character's life. What's going on? Nothing, I just like to speed into rooms usually. Oh, fuck off. Yeah, you speed into rooms and then you stop to make your presence known. How is that any different from just walking in? No fucking shit! Any chance he blew himself up in there? Not likely. There's nowhere to run! Man, it's really coming down. The news didn't say anything about snow. Maybe it's a Christmas miracle. <laughs> Acting. Weather Wizard, Captain Cold, and the Trickster. There's three of them and one of you. I do not like those odds. Oh, shut up. You seriously think multiple people is an issue? Remember when Barry knocked out a group of armed military soldiers with no problem? Remember how all he has to do to KO someone is punch them or run them into a wall? Remember how the only one with powers was relocated to the Star Labs prison with no problem? Coco isn't Coco without the mini marshmallows and you're out. I checked. <sighs> Good ol' Captain Cold, am I right? If you thought the CW would learn from their god-awful scenes with him in Season 1, then get ready to be severely disappointed. So he broke into Joe's house, and Barry pins him against the wall. He then says, If I release my grip from the handle, the core goes critical. You might make it. She won't. Okay, so you have two options here. Relocate him outside, which would be the most logical thing to do. Or relocate her outside. But of course, this dumb cunt doesn't do anything and lets go of him. Then Captain Cold lets go of his gun. But he just said if he lets it go, the core goes critical. And yet nothing happens. If you listen closely, when he lets go of the gun, it makes a noise that implies he deactivated that feature. So, if he deactivated the threat, and Barry can clearly see he just let go of the gun, then why doesn't Barry attack him or relocate him? God damn it. Just don't think about it. If you're not in with them, then tell me where they are. You are full of it, snark. Take his gun away, relocate him to Star Labs, and imprison him until he tells you where they are. Don't just let him go- oh. He let him go. Ceremony. There's thousands of people there. Gee, I sure hope when Barry arrives, he doesn't just stand around to talk to him and instead immediately relocates him to the Star Labs prison like he did that other time. Oh. You see this wand here? Guess what? Um. Guys?
Relocate him, 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 relocate him. Okay, so the gist of this scene is Martin number two tells Barry if he doesn't let him kill him, then all of the bombs that Mark Hamill planted in these presents he gave away to a hundred children will detonate. Martin number two says this line. I see a little flicker of electricity on you. Casket makers in this town are gonna have a very Merry Christmas. Meaning, the bombs are not on a timer. Either Martin or Mark Hamill have to set it off manually, probably with a button on a remote. Look at their hands, they currently aren't holding anything that looks important. Meaning, Barry has several options to solve this problem. He can search Martin and Mark with his super speed and take away said remote, fuck the search and remove all of their possessions like he did with this guy so they can't grab wherever this button is, or knock them out. Let's see what this hero does. Okay, so this discount Patton Oswalt has the power to slow everything down around him. He creates this sort of force field where everything in it feels its effect. This power sounds really effective against the Flash, as is, but the problem is that he has to consciously trigger the power, it isn't on 24-7. So all the Flash has to do is knock him out when he hasn't activated his power and he's done for. What I'm getting at is, now that he left and isn't surrounded by the field of slowness, why doesn't Barry run after? him and knock him out. I have to go. I'm sorry. What? What? B Barry! Oh boy, I can't wait for Barry to come back as the Flash and take him out. It would be a shame if he just stopped to talk because that would ruin everything. Oh. He is much slower. It's ironic. This is a trap. I'm slow, not stupid. Wait, how is the bullet and chandelier moving at normal speed when they are also traveling through the field of slowness? Oh yeah, since he should have been caught right now or in this scene, the kidnapping of Patty should never have happened. Why did you waste the opportunity to use your speed while the field of slowness is off and run away? Just knock him out right now. There's nowhere to run! Alright pussies, I'll go easy this time. I would say just relocate this guy, but there's something holding me back. They didn't make it entirely clear, but if the argument was made, I can believe this guy is constantly made of magma. It's not a physical property he has to toggle on and off. The reason I've come to this conclusion is, Barry squirts a fire hydrant onto him, and the water melts him down. It's similar to Sandman at the beginning of this season. Even when he looks like a regular guy, he's still made of magma. Therefore, if Barry tried grabbing or punching him, his hands would be fucked. So congrats CW, 34 episodes later, and we have our third villain who is an actual challenge for The Flash. <sighs> Alright, let's talk about how incredibly stupid this scene is. Why is Iris the only one who isn't reacting to a car wreck being flipped towards her? Literally everyone else has turned to run away. Oh wait, what? I guess continuity's not a thing. First it shows the crowd running away, then it shows them watching, then back to running away, and then back to watching. <sighs> Whatever, either way, Iris doesn't fucking react in both scenarios. Second, how unlucky is it that this crash flung one big piece of glass further than the rest of the pieces? Cause as you can see from this angle, it's the only piece that's made it this far. And how unlucky is it that it just so happened to fly straight towards Iris? 
Third, how the fuck is Barry not fast enough to grab it or move Iris out of the way? Yes, I am aware that earlier this episode, Harry secretly extracted some of Barry's speed, and that might be your counter-argument. But listen to what Cisco tells Barry after that happened. You're going slower than normal. You clocked in at 1,450 miles an hour. I'm sorry, how fast do I usually run? 1500. Are you telling me that this piece of glass was moving faster than 1450 miles an hour? This is fucking bullshit. It's not like the car exploded. It's not like shrapnel from a bomb. This is just from the car hitting the ground. Relocate them, relocate them, relocate them. God damn it, god damn it. Oh, what? What? Now you relocate them? God, this is making me so hot. What the fuck is wrong with you? Why did you wait for over 10 seconds to finally do something? Did the words not indicate that maybe you should do something like push them out of the way? Do you even pay attention? He didn't do anything because he didn't want to expose himself as the Flash from another universe to Iris and Joe. That's why he waited for her to be distracted to move them. <sighs> Assuming that is the case, we now have inconsistent characterization for Barry, because in this scene that happened shortly after, he says, She is Iris! Okay, she is to me! No matter what universe I'm in, they are my family! Barry would absolutely expose himself before letting any Iris get hurt, so it still doesn't make sense. Also, he's relocated people without revealing himself in the past, so it's not even a risk. Also, also, he relocated them when Iris wasn't looking, so from her perspective, all three of them must have somehow gone outside really fast without making a sound. And when Barry finally comes back a few minutes later, she isn't shocked nor questions how her dorky, defenseless, and non-superpowered husband managed to survive their attacks and lose them. Shut the fuck up! Joe fucking dies later this episode because of this ridiculous contrivance, so... How the hell does a 30 foot tall walking shark just cruise through town without anyone becoming aware of it? Where is the police? Where are the helicopters? You might be fast, but not as fast as I am in war. You're not gonna catch me, Flash. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I will give them credit, though. Can't relocate this guy nor knock him out easily, so he is a formidable foe for the Flash, even though he's been really stupid up until this point. There's nowhere to run! Can we talk about how this plan should immediately give himself away, but the show ignores this? They do show that future Barry takes out past Barry's earpieces and that's why the Star Labs gang can't hear any of this. But remember how they can still track a lot of things through his emblem piece? I'm pretty sure these earpieces are only meant for comms. Hell, you don't even need to be wearing a device linked to Star Labs to be tracked. It's working dude, Rothstein's following you. Zoom's getting on Barry. You can't catch him. Better not. So don't you think future Barry would have appeared on their radar? And even if he doesn't for whatever convenient reason, they still would have seen that past Barry just ditched the villain at hand, moved a few blocks away, and is running around for some reason. But no questions are asked by the Star Labs gang. They just go, Nah, it'll be fine. didn't come sooner. Wow, I guess the Time Wraith just left and decided not to come back once the speaker stopped. Isn't its sole purpose to kill whoever time traveled? Did it just decide to go explore the city for a while? Okay, our satellite has finally found our floating friend and it's coming back. Wow, how convenient. The Time Wraith decides to come back the second Barry gets what he needed from the past. 
Wait, if the Time Wraith can travel as fast as Barry when he runs, then how was it not fast enough when it went after Caitlyn? Why the hell would it even go after the gang when its purpose is to kill the Time Traveler? It didn't go after anyone in the CCPD, even though they tried shooting at it, it just left. What are the fucking rules for this thing? TV shows aren't about logic and plot. You're the new clown? Good. Barry. Good. <laughs> How did you figure out who I was? No, don't stop to talk, don't stop to talk, don't stop to talk. I made a Ugh. Why are you telling him everything? Talk to him once he's locked up, inject him with tranquilizer, and put him in a cell. <laughs> Two whole minutes. Two whole minutes of doing nothing but talking. After time and time again of villains escaping because he didn't act fast, this stupid motherfucker still hasn't learned from his mistakes and spends two whole minutes talking to a bloodthirsty speedster. I cannot fathom how this show got past a first season, much less a second. If he had just locked him up, Wally would have never been abducted, Barry would have never had to give his speed to Zoom, and Caitlyn would have never been abducted. Jesus Christ. All this guy has is super strength, so Barry definitely could have just KO'd him or relocated him to Star Labs if he had his speed, which he should have, if he wasn't a complete incompetent buffoon in the last episode. Seriously? You shoot one time, you miss, and you call it a day? Shoot him again! Seriously? You react when the barrel is a foot away from you and not when this guy prepares to hurl it at you? Too slow. What the fuck? What are Joe and Cisco doing right now? They're right over there. Fucking shoot him. He's distracted. Be in the flash. That's the best version of me. You know, I never saw the crime photos of my mother's murder. I don't even know what to say anymore. Imagine you're an editor for the CW and you have to suffer through this, knowing before anyone else that it's going to turn out like absolute garbage, but you still have to put this footage together because it's your job. Attack him while he's off guard. I'll do whatever it takes to stop you. Whatever it takes except surprise attacking your enemies. Why did he just give up? Isn't he still faster than Zoom with help from the Tachyon device? Yeah, I'm not buying. Tell me, why did you take down Mercury Labs? Ask her once she's in the Star Labs prison, dumbass. You're next, Red. <laughs> Well, that's too bad. He should have just sent me because that way you would have already been. Destroyed. Yeah, there's no way this speeding car did not make an ounce of noise for a few seconds before hitting her. I finally rest and watch the sunrise on a grateful you. Oh shit. 
I can't believe I forgot this one. Since Zoom should have been apprehended twice by this point, Barry's dad should not have been killed at the very end. Anyway, there you have it, folks. I actually had more fun putting this video together than I did for season 1, and I've got a full chub knowing I just annihilated another season of the trash. But at what cost? My own sanity. The Badman should have been caught 18 times, and 8 people should have been saved or avoided danger if the writers were consistent and talented or even had some semblance of a functioning brain. The total amount is a little bit more than season 1, kind of expected. And again, think about all the scenes that would have been cut out if the villains were arrested at their first encounter with the Flash, like they should have. Scenes with them, scenes of other characters talking about them, etc. That amounts to way more than 20 scenes. The Flash stopped to talk to the villain or do nothing when he arrived nine times, which means nine shots were taken, which I'm pretty sure would fuck anyone up. But hey, at least this is within the span of about 15 hours of shit. Upon wrapping up the editing for this video, I can safely say I will only be making one more video for this series to make it a trilogy. It takes way too much time to suffer through an entire season, take notes, record and edit a 40 minute video that will inevitably feel repetitive, all while working a full time job. My current plan is to cover season 7 since it premieres today, to provide objective proof that the show's writing was garbage from day 1 and is still bad 7 seasons seasons later. If Justice League has enough scenes with The Flash, I'll cover that too to see if Zack Snyder also turns Barry Allen into the embodiment of stupidity. But at the moment, the DCEU reigns as having the better live-action Flash, as his action scenes are inoffensive unlike this show's, from what I remember. Thank you for watching, and like in my first video, I'll let Patrick, you're watching movies wrong, and the long man walk you out. Like, sure, to an objective, omniscient viewer, it would make logical sense for, for the Flash to immediately knock out his enemies and take their weapons away, or relocate them to the Star Labs prison every single time. And then there would be no conflict, and no drama. His enemies would never get away, he would never face hardships, and he would never grow, and there would be no story. Your job as a writer is to solve problems that prevent you from having the payoffs you want. You're not supposed to give up and appeal to the idea that you had no choice. That's a terrible argument and you should feel bad.